Hi, we're out here on the range, and I'd like to talk to you about hurl bats today. A hurl bat is a throwing axe developed in the 14th century and was common in the 15th and 16th centuries. The most common throwing axe that we think about is the Viking axe or the Francesca, literally the Frankish axe. It's something like this. Um, this is a Francesca I made quite some time ago, and it works like we'll make a cut. The Frankish throwing axe was developed in approximately the 600s. Uh, may have been a little earlier, we're not entirely sure. But it was used through the Norse expansion um, in the early Middle Ages. But by the time of the late Middle Ages, um, the throwing axe had all but completely vanished. But the idea was not extinct. In the 14th century, in the Germanies, uh, German knights had the idea that before a massed lance charge, it would be a good idea to take a number of axes and fling them at their opponents so that they would flinch right before the moment of contact so that they could more easily unzip their line of shields and lances. Uh, at the time, cavalry charges were conducted knee to knee, and every man's shield guarded every other man's right side, and every man's lance warded him from an opponent uh, on his opposite. But if, when you're about to clash with lances, you see a giant axe flying at you, and you flinch away, your aim is completely disrupted, and your teammate is no longer protected by your formation and shield. Shortly thereafter, um, this was what developed. And this is a very simple weaponized version of a, a goosewing carpenter's axe. Um, if you take away the spikes, this is what, this is a simple goosewing shaped socketed axe. Um, it was, it is still in common use. Uh, or at least was in the last 50 years in Europe. And these spikes are a very simple addition. They're just an L-shaped piece of metal that was welded onto the socket when it was completed. This works, and we'll cut to that. Shortly after these axes started becoming weaponized and used in lance charges in the Germanies, well, we don't exactly know what happened after that. But an enterprising smith, my suspicion, decided that sockets were a pain in the butt to form. And these were expendable weapons in combat. They were flung away, and they weren't going to be used or seen again. If instead of taking the labor of forging a socketed axe, you instead draw this out into a point, you get something like this. This is a reproduction of an axe that we have in a German museum. It's the GNH, uh, Germanis National Historisch, something like that. Um, it's a fairly famous image of a hurlbat. It's passed around on the internet significantly. If you do a Google search, you will find this. Um, this is the earliest or second earliest iteration of the form of hurl bats that we know of. Um, I suspect that you could date this to the last decade of the 14th century or the first decade of the 15th. Shortly after the devel development of this little hurl bat, we see a hurl bat that looked something like this. Now, this was one of my earliest recreations. It's actually too large. It's about 50% too large. The real size was only somewhat larger than this one here. But you can see it is of a more refined shape and size. The handle swells out, whereas this one is quite plainly very flat. Um, it balances better in the hand, and as you'll see in the demo, um, it sticks pretty well too. Shortly after the development of this fellow, we have a fascinating set of um, 
of depictions in art and one physical example in Eastern Europe of hurlbats shaped like this. Um, these were much larger. Um, some of them were made with solid wood handles on top of on top of the tang, I suppose that would be. Um, we have examples in Hungary and Romania. Shortly following this, a smaller crescent-shaped version was developed in the late 15th century. We have three, to my knowledge, examples of axes shaped like this. Um, we have them in Germany, in Romania, and Hungary. And last but not least, in the 16th century, we had the development of the Werf Cruise, or Throwing Cross. Um, this in particular is a reproduction of the Throwing Cross featured in Emperor Maximilian's Book of the Tournament. And uh, of, of note is that while all hurlbats were made plainly and uh, in obviously meant for utilitarian um, martial purposes, all Werf Cruisen we have were also highly decorated. It looks like a cross to us. The medieval people were not stupid. If it appears to us, it appeared to them. And I believe that all Werf Cruisen we find were decorated because they were also, let's call them military objects of worship. The history of Hurlbats is a wide open field of study. It's not well understood even by museum curators in Europe. I highly encourage it. But from a reenactment standpoint, or a recreational standpoint, hurlbats are a wonderful teaching tool to get into the hobby of thrown weapons. The original hurlbats were made to increase the effectiveness of a thrown weapon. So when the axe rotated out of its period of rotation, it could still stick into the enemy. For our case, we're not interested in throwing at an enemy, but we are interested in throwing at targets. And sticks, axe sticks, are the best way to encourage a beginning thrower to pursue the sport. A hurlbat can be a tremendous teaching tool. It, just like an enemy, it will stick in the target at all dimensions. So no matter when the student is learning about periods of rotation and where they need to space themselves, they can learn through a series of successes and modify their stance, their spacing, to become, uh, to give them more perfect successes rather than through a series of frustrating failures. I'm a blacksmith. I've made quite a number of hurlbats over the years, but you don't have to be a blacksmith to make your own. Um, especially for hurlbats of this style, they're very easy to cut from sheet metal, and if you don't want to do that, you can buy your own. For my money, these, the Cold Steel Templar, are pretty much the best option out there. They're reasonably inexpensive, and they're very well made. Um, they are not the most perfect historical recreation. You can see they're not identical, but they are obviously singing from the same songbook. And the Cold Steel Templar throws very nicely. It's very handy. It's also very sharp, so be careful. I would actually recommend dulling the tips on the bottom before throwing, otherwise you'll be liable to slice your hands up. Um, but I cannot emphasize enough that hurlbats are a way to grow the sport and train new throwers without forcing them to deal with a series of frustrating days on the range before they can experience some heartening success. Thank you.